Hey, this is Pixel. Today I'm taking a look at Sir Lovelot. This game is coming to pretty much every single platform on March 3rd. We have PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC. I think it's coming out everywhere, except for one place. The one place where it's already been out for a while, and that's the Atari VCS. This seems like the strangest of release schedules. So the pitch behind this game being a two-dimensional platformer, this is one of those games that's very difficult and you're going to die a lot. In fact, it likes to compare itself to Celeste and Super Meat Boy, but there is one critical difference between this game and those games. But first, let's talk about the similarities. In Sir Lovelot, sure, you are going to die a lot, but also the quality of the graphics and the animations and the gameplay overall is top notch. It does feel very similar to Celeste and Super Meat Boy. Not only that, but much like Super Meat Boy, this includes a little bit of cheeky humor. For every level you beat, you climb up the maiden's hair, you give her a kiss, and then you turn the lights out. Because Sir Lovelot gets around. Each subsequent level though, the lights are back on, the love romance is off, and you are on to the next princess. In every level that you play, there will be a number of coins that you'll have to collect if you'd like to get 100%. You have a threshold for how many times you can die, and there are hidden geese in the levels. Now, as you progress through one world to the next, of which there are four worlds, there is a new extra item that you have to pick up. In the very beginning of the game, it's a flower. That's the only thing you need. You have to deliver that to the princess and then she turns the light out with you. In the second world, you'll not only need to pick up the flower, but you'll also need a ring because princesses over the course of the game don't come cheap. The geese and the golden eggs that come with them are the one thing that stands out a little bit different than the other items. And that's because those items are hidden behind invisible walls. The problem with this mechanic is is that most of the invisible walls stand out pretty well. You can just see where would they be able to fit an invisible wall. As soon as you identify that, that's probably the invisible wall. And that kind of leads me into my one criticism and the one thing that I think is very different between this game and Super Meat Boy and Celeste. While Sir Lovelot gets the fundamentals of platforming basics down perfect, it's got great animations, like I previously said, great gameplay, like I previously said, but it's missing one element, and that's anything creative. They haven't done anything here that nobody has done before. Celeste had a lot of mechanics that made the platforming better and made the game more interesting. Super Meat Boy was the first 2D platformer that had instant revives and crushing difficulty. So that was the creative element there. Here, I'm struggling to find exactly what makes Sir Lovelot stand out and be different. But that alone doesn't make Sir Lovelot a bad game. Sir Lovelot is actually a pretty good game. I had fun playing this, and if you enjoy 2D crushingly difficult platformers, this one will probably keep your attention for some time. Overall though, the lack of new features, the lack of creative design elements, and the lack of extras are what keeps Sir Lovelot simply being a very good game and not a great game. One of the things I really would have loved to see in this particular game is you are already collecting coins. Use those coins, use those collectibles that you're finding in levels to unlock different character skins or different bonus levels or different abilities, something different. In the end though, this game only progresses from A to B and once you've beaten the game, that appears to be it. For all you 2D players though out there, this one is probably worth your time depending on what the price comes in at. You are going to get what you see here. It's a pretty solid game with pretty simple design that is relatively fun and a little bit of cheeky humor. If you liked this video, well then like this video. And if you'd like to find out about more great games that just haven't got enough attention, take a look at my channel where I specialize in finding great indie hidden gems. Thanks for hanging out with me, and until next time, this has been Pixel.